Hey folks, this is Jake Davis bringing my third and final top five video celebrating the cinematic release of Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, now, please go back and watch my other videos if you want. Uh, I already did my top five Brad Pitt, top five Leonardo DiCaprio. I did my review for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I also did a top five Tarantino video way back in December. So if you want to go back and watch any of those, please do. And uh, subscribe while you're at it. Uh, they will probably be, oh, what I'm talking about today are the top five movies about movies. Now, that kind of seems like I might be a little bit of a, I don't know, like, like a niche, uh, category there, but it's actually a shitload of these, man. There are so many movies about people in the movies. Um, now, for the sake of my rules here, I decided, uh, that the movie had to be about someone either making a movie writing a movie, or selling a movie. Not just uh, people living in Hollywood. You know what I mean? And there's plenty of those. Uh, there's also probably going to be spoilers here, because I'm going to talk about I'm gonna be talking about some of my favorite movies of all time, and uh, I don't really want to censor or hold myself back. You know, I just kicked my stove. Um, and also, one more thing, uh, a bit of an asterisk. Um, I have never seen Day for Night undubbed, or eight and a half from the beginning, so I didn't really feel it was fair to include those since I haven't seen them in their purity. Uh, but uh, day, day for Night should probably be on this list. Anyhow, without further ado, my top five personal picks for the best movies about movies, and it is so hot, so hot in my place right now. Anyhow, number five, Tropic Thunder. Now, I've said for many, many, many years that I believe Tropic Thunder is one of the most intelligent unique and downright funniest comedies I've ever seen in my life. Uh, for example, the way the film kicks off, uh, we got the fake ads. We got, got, got an ad for Al Pacino's booty sweat drink, as well as three fake trailers starring our fake movie stars in the movie before we even get the studio logos and, you know, move in, movement into the film. Uh, it, it's, it's not, if you don't know what Tropic Thunder is about, Tropic Thunder is about a bunch of guys in Vietnam, trying to shoot a Vietnam War movie, and it is a clusterfuck production. They're behind schedule, they're over budget, the actors have... There's too many movie stars involved, like everybody's egos are just like snapping at each other. And uh, you got, well, you got Ben Stiller as the big movie action star trying to step out of his comfort zone and prove to everybody that he is a good actor. You got um, uh, Jack Black, who is a comedic star, who, you know, wants to do something like this so people take him more seriously. You got the rapper, who's just trying to get his foot in the door in the movies. And then, you have Robert Downey Jr. as Kirk Lazarus. Holy shit. A prestige actor, who has literally dyed the color of his own skin. To look like a black man for this film. It was one of the most... It's one of the bravest performances in movie history, actually. I mean, it's stunning, it's brilliant, it's beyond quotable. I mean, there, there's no one alive who's never heard the phrase, you never go full retard. <laughs> uh, then there's the, the brilliant um, uh, performance from Tom Cruise as uh, Les Grossman. Wonderful performance in that movie. Everybody always talks about the dancing at the end, and sure, that's great. But Tom's real. Tom is really good in that. Uh, oh God, Nick Nolte and Danny McBride and and little Brandon Soho. That or, or Soho? Oh shit! I don't know. Um, uh, he was so good in that as 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 the leader of the uh, was it Green Dragons? Oh shit! Is the leader of of, of the heroin uh heroin fuckers <laughs> farmers the heroin dealers <laughs> who um uh he's like a fan. Of a uh, of a uh, tug who who's been Stiller's character, and they love his they love his Oscar bait movie, which like embarrassed him a few years ago. Where he tried to play you know semi mentally deficient uh, called Simple Jack, and look that's where the you never go full retard thing. But it's, it's you know the characters don't just feel like caricatures. You know they actually feel like there there's layered stuff going on. And each guy has their goal. Each guy has a reason he wants to be there. Like one of the more intriguing things I always liked about the movie is about how. Uh, Lazarus seems to, seems to genuinely like uh, Tug Speedman as an actor. Thinks he's kind of un, under uh, under underrated and unappreciated in his class. It is a great movie. 
It is a one of a kind. It is it is brilliant. It is utter brilliance, and I still say Ben Stiller was utterly snubbed for his best original screenplay Oscar nomination. Downey got nominated, but you know that was all the nominations that movie got. I mean, to be fair, the script should have been nominated. The picture should have been nominated. Stiller probably should have been nominated for director. That is a great movie. It is a perfect movie in many ways. Mm. Number four, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You goddamn right it is. I almost didn't want to put it on here just because it's so new and we're talking about so much. But, I mean, seriously, man, it's like, it's, okay, look, Tarantino's done work, told stories about real people. He's told stories about people in movies before. He's told, uh, he's fucked with history before. But with this, what he really does is something he's never done before, and that's Tarantino tells a fairy tale, a yarn. This is a film about purity and love and friendship and peace. Uh, and with all that foul Tarantino, you know, charm. Uh, it's, 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 it's a touching movie. It's a, it's a thrilling movie, even though most of it's just people sitting around talking. Uh, it's one of DiCaprio's best performances of his career. It is Brad Pitt's best performance of his career. And I, I just could not speak higher of this mo movie. It is a fictitious fantasy fairy tale version of Hollywood in the 60s where the innocent live happily ever after and evil is vanquished. And I loved it. Um, number three, Singing in the Rain. Singing in the Rain is hands down my favorite musical ever made. I mean, Gene Kelly's performance in that is just off the charts. It's just, just fucking oozing excuse me, oozing charisma and style and charm. And I've said before that what always took me about back, uh, took me aback about his, um, uh, his dancing was it was so goddamn athletic and so goddamn manly. There's nothing sissy about the way, um, Gene Kelly moved and danced. It was, it was amazing to watch him fucking flaunt around a stage. Uh, but he's not the only performance. I can't remember who plays Cosmo Brown. What was his name? Was it Donald O'Connor? Something like that, maybe. Uh, but he's terrific. The famous make him laugh scene. Debbie Reynolds is uh, excellent in this. The whole fantasy sequence towards the end of the movie. Gotta dance. Amazing sequence. Uh, Gene Hagen's hysterical Oscar-nominated performance. Uh, cannot speak higher of Singing in the Rain. I've seen it many times in my life. I'll probably see it a few more times. Uh, since, you know, i got little girls now who are probably going to grow up wanting to watch movies like that. Uh, number two. Ed Wood. Ed Wood, quite probably, is Tim Burton's finest film. Uh, my favorite use of black and white photography in, say, like the last 40 years, which what narrows it down to like it and seven other movies, maybe. Um, Johnny Depp's incredibly charismatic uh, performance in this movie, as well as Martin Landau's Oscar winning performance as Bella Lugosi, and um, Rick Baker's Oscar winning makeup work. Uh, Great small performance by Bill Murray as well. What always loved, what I always loved about this movie, where at its heart, sure, it's about the friendship between Ed Wood and Bela Lugosi in Lugosi's last years or so, so. But what's so beautiful about Ed Wood is that the idea the film is telling you it's not about being the best. It's not about being remembered forever in a day. It's about chasing your dream, even if you have no fucking reason to be there. Even if you are so untalented, you are disgracing the very industry you want to be a part of, it's your dream, and you've got a right to chase it. Uh, <laughs> it is, it's a wonderful movie. It's a terrific movie. Uh, another film I've seen many, many, many times in my life, and I'll see many, many more times. And it's also where the whole joke of Sarah Jessica Parker looks like a horse started. So it's always been to me, yeah, it's funny, but she made the joke about herself, so it's not really a real insult back to her. You know what I mean? Plus, you know you fuck Sarah Jessica Parker. Stop lying. And number one, greatest movie about movies, and not my opinion. Oh, no, sir. This is a fact. Sunset Boulevard. Now, Sunset Boulevard is the most, maybe the most unique movie ever fucking made. William Holden and Gloria Swanson and Otto Preminger. One excellent performance after the other. It and American Hustle are the only two movies in the history of the Academy Awards to ever be nominated for Picture Director, all four acting categories, and script, and not win jack shit. Uh, okay. 
this isn't a spoiler, even though I warned you about spoilers. There's no real spoiler to Sunset Boulevard, because, you know, saying Jack William Holden gets killed, well, that's how the movie starts. The movie starts with the dead guy talking directly to the audience. Legendary for that kind of stuff. Uh, Nor Norman Desmond, one of the greatest film villains in movie history, hands down, legitimately scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. You know, that last shot of her creeping towards the camera. Oh, that's wonderful stuff. It's wonderful stuff. Uh, so yeah, there it is, man. There's my five favorite movies about movies, and I got some I got some honorable mentions here if you feel like hearing them. First off, we got to talk about this really unique um, a trilogy of horror movies Wes Craven did. You got New Nightmare, Scream 3, and uh, Cursed. All three horror movies about people in the film industry or show business in Hollywood. And they're all, and they're legit horror movies, too. They're not half-ass horror movies. Because, uh, you know, Wes Craven. Now, I'm not a fan of any of those movies, but New Nightmare does have quite a fan following. But I don't like any of those three movies. I just think it's kind of unique that he did that. I mean, they're not connected in any way. Uh, <coughs> and they weren't even really that close to each other, either. And it just is an interesting thing I always notice about that. Uh, Bowfinger. Holy shit. Bowfinger is a great movie. Almost made my cut here. Uh, Eddie Murphy's funniest performance of his entire career. He plays Kit Ramsey, who is an erotic, insecure, s sexual predator <laughs> um, a movie star. And he's being manipulated by this low-life film producer who's just really stalking and terrorizing the man just to get the shots he needs for a movie because he doesn't have permission to use this huge movie star in his movie. It's a great film, Steve Martin. It's, it's a great, great movie. See it. Um, Barton Fink. Barton Fink is another great movie. It's the Coen Brothers. Uh, John Turturro plays a stage writer who moves to Hollywood to start writing movies. And while he's suffering and working through his writer's block, he gets to know his next-door neighbor who may or may not be a serial killer. Uh, the Big Picture is another good movie starring Kevin Bacon as a film school graduate who comes to Hollywood. And it's just really about him struggling just to have a good idea. Just to have an idea. You know, uh, it's a good movie. Hugo is a beautiful fantasy. Uh, Martin Scorsese's only family film he ever made. It's kind of a, a what-if fantasy story about George Malaise. It's probably the most important visionary in the history of movies. And it's also kind of... That little thing kind of revolves around a story about a uh, about an orphan living in a train station with his pet robot. White Hunter Blackheart. Oh, what's the word for it? Is it Ramona Clef or is that something else? Oh, never mind. But White Hunter Blackheart. You know, it's the law and order it. It's the story of John Huston and Humphrey Bogart going to Africa to shoot the African queen. And basically this, this film is saying that, you know, John Huston the Houston characters really doesn't really give a shit about the project that much. He just wants to go to Africa so he can hunt uh, a male African elephant. Um, and it's, it's a sinful, horrible thing he's trying to do. And all I'll see, eventually gets an innocent man killed and he never gets his tusks. Um, and, uh, I had, oh yeah, Swimming with Sharks is another one I almost put on the list here. Uh, um, you see, Swimming with Sharks is a movie about Kevin Spacey is a, a really cruel um, uh, uh, the studio executive who takes great relishment in torturing and humiliating his assistant. Uh, it, it's a really good movie, but the truth is I kind of decided not to put it on there just because I'm in a fuck Kevin Spacey mood right now. Um, and that's, that's my list. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, I think my battery is going to die, even though it's fucking plugged in. It's probably overheating or something, so I better cut this short. I hope you all enjoyed this video. hope you like my stuff. Come back. Get involved, share, subscribe, whatever. You know how to use the internet. I'm Jake Davis, and I'll catch you on the fly.